What's good, my mathematicians? This is Professor Spencer from PS I Love Math back with another math banger. I know that some of you want to move along and just get to the math because that's what you clicked on for. But first, I want to tell you a little bit of what we're going to do today. So we are going to be factoring today. And I'm going to show you two methods back to back that are not the AC method, but they are easy methods to accomplish. So with that being the case, let's jump into this video and please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel because you know your girl needs a subscription. So as you can see, we're about to get started and we're going to do this with the TI-84 plus CE. Now you can also work this with your TI-84. I'm not sure if it's gonna work with the TI-83. So our first problem is going to be 7x squared minus 20x minus three. So remember, we're gonna work in conjunction with the calculator to work this problem out and to get it factored. So there are gonna be two methods. I'm gonna walk you through the first method and walk you through the second method. Then in the next problem, I'm going to do them together. So the first method we're going to use is the bottoms up method. Bottoms up method, if those of you who have come here, you've been using the AC method. This is AX squared plus BX plus C. In the AC method or any of these methods, you usually start off by multiplying A times C. In this case, we're going to do that today. So we're gonna get seven times negative three, which is equal to negative 21. Now from there, you wanna find the two factors that equal up to negative 20. So with that being the case, we're gonna to move to our calculator and we're gonna show you how to do it in the calculator. The first thing you're gonna do is hit the Y equals button. When you hit the Y equals button, you'll get here. So you're going to do whatever this A times C is, which in our case is negative 21, you're going to put that in over X. So you're going to write it like this. In Y1, you're going to write negative 21 divided by X. So that's what I'm going to put here. Negative, and remember the negative is under the three. Don't use the minus or it's going to give you error. Negative 21, then the division bar divided by X. And the X is the X T theta button, which is next to alpha here, right? So it's the X T theta button. And mine is the green button next to alpha. Uh, but your, my alpha is green and it's the button next to it. On yours, your alpha may be a different color. It might be blue or something. The other thing that we want to do here is we want to go to Y2. Now, you only need to do this once and then leave it in there for the rest of your problem. We're going to be putting in Y2. We're going to be putting X plus Y1 because that's how we're going to get the middle number, X plus Y1. All right, so the X is that X T theta again, plus now the step to get to Y1 is going to be VAR, which is next to the clear button, right across. If you go to math and you go to cross, you'll see V-A-R-S. So you're going to go to VAR. Then you're going to go over, hit the arrow over in the little arrow button up here, go over to Y VARs, all right? Just hit the enter button, which is going to give you function. Then right there, you'll see Y1, and you're going to hit enter for Y1. Now remember, this is only done one time. So as you see, you'll see Y2 equals X plus Y1. That'll be all you need after this. So if you need to rewind, go back and rewind, okay? So once we get that one, where are we gonna to go to see these things? Because remember, we're looking for we're going to be looking for numbers that equal up to this negative 20. So in order to see that, the next thing you need to do is you're going to hit the second key in graph, which on top of the graph button, which is all the way to the right, it says table in blue. So you're going to hit second in graph, but that's going to equal table. Okay, so once we're done that, that's the calculator function. And now we're looking for negative 20. So all we have to do is scroll up, we look at Y2 and we look for negative 20. In this case, it's pretty easy. You see that negative 20 is positive one and negative 21 because you need the two numbers that multiply out to give you this number, right? But then add up to give you the middle number. So let's repeat that, let's write that. If you have AX squared plus BX plus C, the first thing you do is you're gonna multiply A times C. Once you get that number from A times C, you need to find the numbers that 
multiply out mm -hmm. that A times C, but also the same two numbers have to add up to B. So they have to multiply out to A times C, which in our case in this one was negative 21, but they also have to add up to B in our case is negative 20. So the first step is seven times negative three, which we say is negative 21. We need to find out what adds up to the B, which is negative 20. And we found out those numbers from the calculator is going to be one and negative 21. That's pretty much that. So now we get to do our method. So this first method is called the bottoms up method. So with the bottoms up method, we know we had A times C. So a lot of times you'll see videos that say, well, AX squared plus BX plus C when A is greater than one, because when A is equal to one, it's easy to factor. So we're going to use that here with the bottoms up method the fact that it's easier to work a problem with A equals one. The bottoms up method, we are going to rewrite this without the A. So we're gonna write X squared minus 20X. And then we're going to write our A times C minus 21. And we're going to factor this. We already know our factors from the calculator. So that's gonna give us X plus one and X minus 21. However, this cannot be the end of the problem because we didn't start off with x squared minus 20x minus 21. We started off with a seven in front. So at this point, we are going to take that seven that we had and divide it by the number on the end. So we're gonna say divide it by seven, right? And we're gonna divide both numbers by seven. So you're gonna divide by the original a, the original a, which was seven in this problem. After you divide by the original a, you're going to see if anything reduces. So let's see, we got x plus one over seven does not reduce, we leave it alone. And then we have x minus, well, 21 divided by seven is three. And we don't have fractions in factoring, at least not normally. So this is where we're going to do the bottoms up. That's where it gets its name from. So any bottom you're going to bring up. So that's going to give you the factors of 7x plus 1, because you brought that 7 up, and then x minus 3. The, me next method, the next method we're going to do is the Berry method. Now we're going to do the Berry method with this same problem, and the Berry method is, simple, is similar to the bottoms up method. So if we had 7x squared, minus 20x minus three. And we were doing the Berry method. We would still have to do a times c, which is going to give us again, negative 21. We still need the factors that are gonna add up to 20, which are going to be one positive one and negative. Okay, but in the Berry method, that's different from the bottoms up method, where the bottoms up method, you just use the, the x and you get rid of the a. In the Berry method, you just write the a twice with your two factors. So you would write 7x plus 1, and then you would write 7x minus 21. So whereas in the bottoms up method, you drop the A. In the Berry method, you kept the A on both of them. But obviously, you can't keep that because it's not 7 times 7, which is 49. So what you need to do here is you need to take and factor, but you don't leave the factors in the problem. You need to see if there's anything in common, if there's a GCF that you can pull out in either one of these. Seven and one doesn't have a GCF, so you leave that as seven X plus one. However, this has a GCF. So the GCF here, if you remember anything about greatest common factors would be seven. So you would actually factor out a seven and get X minus three. We don't need this seven here. Remember, this is just part of the process, leaving us with X minus three. This is part of the process. Don't ask, well, why don't we need the seven? And I don't know what happened to the seven. If you don't know what happened to it, it's a reason it's called the shortcut. All right, you might not understand why it works. Just understand that it works and you will always get the right answer. I'm going to do a problem with both methods side by side. Remember, you only have to use one method, but I'm showing you two methods. So that's 4B squared minus 15B plus 9. And over here, I'm going to do the bottoms up method. And over here, I'm going to do the Berry method. So you have to do 4 times 9, which is 36. Let's pop 36 into our calculator so you don't forget how to do that. 
You just go to y equals, and then you do 36, remember, divided by x. That's it. Don't worry about the second one. The second one is already done. You hit second, and then you hit table or second, and then graph so you can get to the table. Now, this time, we're looking for two numbers that do what? That are going to add up to negative 15. Okay, so if we scroll up, we're noticing that it doesn't matter where you start. You see that all of those were positive. So I'm going to the negatives because I'm looking for negative 15. And you see right here, I have negative 15. So negative 15 is negative 3 and negative 12. That gives me negative 15, right? So in this case, I'm just going to write the B. So I'm going to write B minus 3 and B minus 12. That's in the bottoms up method. If I was doing the Barry method, I write 4B minus 3 and 4B minus 12. So the bottoms up method, I didn't use the 4, so I have to go back and divide both sides by 4. Reduce. I don't need to reduce this. This is still B minus 3 over 4, and this becomes B minus 3. Since I have a bottom number, I need to bring the bottoms up. And so my final answer is going to be 4B minus 3 times B minus 3. If I'm in the Barry method, where I actually included the 4, I have to make sure that I... See, this one I reduce and this one I factor out. So here, the 4 and the 3 are already factored, minus 3. But here, I would factor out a 4, and that would leave me with B minus 3. Remember, the 4 does not apply, and so we're just left with B minus 3. See how quick it was that we did that problem using the calculator to get the factors for us? because a lot of times students don't know the negatives and the positives for the answer. So this is going to be my last example, again, really quick, and I'm not going to go through it, so you might have to stop the video and, and work it through. Now, remember, this is assuming that if you had any GCS, remember, in factor in GCS come first, these problems don't have a greatest common factor in between all three of them. A times C, negative 40, I need what's going to add up to B. Go into my calculator, y equals negative 40 divided by x, table. I'm looking for negative 3. I'm going to scroll up to find out where y, 2 equals negative 3, and I got negative 8 and positive 5. I'm going to do the bottoms up method real quick without talking. Just give it up. I'm not your girl. the Barry method, where we bring the 2 down, still minus 8 and 2x plus 5. With having fun on my own, it's better to care for yourself than rely on somebody else, so don't get me wrong, I'm just fine. And we are done both methods. So again, it starts with multiplying A by C. There is a method called the AC method. I have an older video on the AC method on my channel. This is the bottoms up and the Barry method using the TI-84 calculator to help you with the math that you might not be able to do really quickly with the adding of negatives and positives. This is Professor Simpson from TS. I love math. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Please make a comment. If there's a problem that you want me to do, comment down below. 